Welcome to our Friday, March 15, 2019 edition of News in Depth. I'm Ramesh Jairam with the details. First up, private charges against GCAM chair and government commissioners dismissed. Here is Royce and Drakes with this report. GCOM's chairman retired Justice James Patterson and three government-nominated commissioners were to appear in the Georgetown Magistrates Court to answer private criminal charges. However, only the chairman and commissioner Desmond Trotman were served and appeared before Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan, but in a short space of time, the case was dismissed. The charges were filed by activist and businessman Marcel Gaskin, who is claiming that GCOM's chairman and the three commissioners had conspired not to hold general and regional elections within the 90 days period following the passage of the No Confidence Motion. Attorney at Law Sanjeev Datadin, who is representing Gaskin when questioned by the Chief Magistrate about the charges, he said it was his client's opinion that the four had breached the Constitution. However, the Commission's attorney Neil Boston described the charges as Mickey Mouse and posited that the charges should not be entertained by the court. After listening to both sides, the Chief Magistrate said she saw no need to continue hearing the argument since it appeared frivolous and was an abuse of the procedure of the court. Outside of the courtroom, the lawyers for Gaskin and GCOM spoke to the media. To say what the reasons for a decision are without me having it in writing, but uh, everybody was in court, so you would have heard that the, um, what the court has a, has a doubt about is whether the offense at common law of a conspiracy to breach the constitution. So she was concerned about that. And she said it, it, she wasn't satisfied about that, essentially. At least that was my understanding. Um, your best record is, of course, the exact words of what that, um, that uh, the magistrate would have said to you and would have said in her decision. I'm sure the reasons um, may be available in, in good time. but because it's abuse of the process and it doesn't disclose any offense known to the law of Guyana. So that's it. Hey, looky there. Let me go and take your boots. Boots? No, mama, mama. I ain't gonna get a lack of teeth in a big stinky, dirty second-hand boots. Plus, it can be more cheaper online. And then got my favorite color. Pink. Let me go on. Online shopping. Cheaper, faster, better. Pass back. Hey, horse racing fans, get ready for the first annual Triple Crown Horse Race Meeting. 27 races, two different tracks with over $20 million in cash and prizes up for grabs. The action continues on March 24th at the Rising Sun Turf Club for the second leg and the final leg on April 21st at the Port Morant Turf Club. It's Guyana's first Triple Crown Horse Racing event featuring the top horses and jockeys. See and be there, presented by the Jumbo Jet Horse Racing Committee. I sell swaggerific, Spaniard me like staggerific. I Spaniard, drink a star. When the star give me a hand on the world place. Turn up, 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 I don't business if you're not on time. You must always have stag in the line. Well, everybody have a stag in the hand. Where's my Stagman's beer? Disturbing the dead, thieves break into tomb and takes cash. Here is that report. A 66 village quarantine family had to relive the burial of their loved one after his tomb was vandalized yesterday morning. Rupnarayan Kolesar 60, who died on February 23rd after prolonged illness, was laid to rest on March 1st. Yesterday morning, Kolesar's tomb was vandalized and his relatives are in a state of shock and fuming over the cruel act. Workers near the cemetery were alerted by a strong stench coming from the area and informed the family. Brother and sister came from New York, so they are going back to the airport. So we went and checked. We went and checked three times break, checked some marks, went on the arm too, and a small hole at the top. So we left it as the next day, you know, we said we are going and check. And then... Before that, I, I ran a practice hard, so I'm writing. 
and we go into break now my mother can't told me that how the tomb break when we came we see the casket in front of the tomb the body out of the casket the body lying face down yeah and then i i went up scaled on and um, get a man for putting back the body putting back the casket and putting it back in Kevin Colasar, the son of the deceased, related to this newscast that the loss of his father was traumatizing and he is trying to come to terms with this cruel act. It's very sad, you know, losing somebody close to me in the family first thing. So close, and that was a guard to me. I'm uh, very glad if police could stand out or hear something to catch a culprit. He added that over 500 U.S. dollars and other valuables were taken by the perpetrators. I get over some U.S. U.S. and the, um, the casket handle was taken right now. Casket handle and cash? Yeah. Anything else? No. I came brought it to the airport coming back with two something in the morning. Saw lights there. The person told me that... Um, he saw lights, so I asked him which part, the man said right where my old man buried. So the man think, he said that he think we put up solar lights. But at the same time, my, my old lady get a dream at 2 o'clock. That my old man called for she, but she ain't no guy until we go and see what, what happened. Upon breaking and braiding the tomb, the perpetrators tossed the body outside of his grave and took off with the valuables. The tomb was rebuilt yesterday and the body was laid to rest once again. More news on the other side of the break. Stay with us. Karibi Rice. From the lush rice fields of Guyana, straight to your home. Ruby Rice, our people, our rice. Guyana! Guyana! Extra Beer presents, presents the youngest and the hottest dancehall artist, Alkaline! Alkaline! We make it pass a little drama. When them all pull up themselves, we keep it calm. I feel like my gang conquer the world now. The Conqueror! You can't stand with Live on Easter Saturday, April 20th, 2019 at the Guyana National Stadium, Providence. Music by DJ Magnum, Gully Russ and Diamond, David Hyde, DJ Fresh, DJ Damien and Andre, Bobby Kush from Jamaica, Super Ray, One Man Band, Alkaline Live, Alkaline Live, Easter Saturday, 20th of April, 2019, early bird tickets $2,500 after $3,000, stage front $15,000, stay tuned, tickets out soon Guy in a national stadium Providence <laughs> Welcome back. Lands and Survey opens new office in Berbice. Let's take a look at this report. Minister of State Joseph Harmon on Wednesday reaffirmed government's commitment to decentralizing and improving access to government services for every Guyanese when he officially declared open the Guyana Lands and Surveys Commission's spanking new $37 million office in Vryman's Irving, New Amsterdam. At a simple ceremony, Minister Harmon said the government has a responsibility to ensure that all the services of the state are available to all citizens, regardless of geographic location, political affiliation, or any other factor. Was government's commitment to providing quality service to the people of Guyana, irrespective of where they were, on the coast, 
in the hinterland or anywhere that the quality of service which we provide was going to be the same, the standard service everywhere. And that's a commitment which we made to the people of this country when we came into office. That there'll be no distinction between coast and hinterland. And so that what is happening here today is part of a process undertaken by government when we came into office. Also in attendance at the ceremony were Minister Karen Cummings, accompanied by the Mayor of New Amsterdam, Winifred Haywood. Initially, the Commission's office was located inside the compound of the Regional Democratic Council. Manager of the Land Administration Division, Michael Hudson, said that the agency is positioning itself not only to better serve the members of the public, but to better provide 21st century land administration, mapping and serving services. We have continued to, to position ourselves to the 21st century, to provide 21st century land administration, mapping and surveying services to the public as well as to our sister government agencies and the private sector. Mayor of New Amsterdam, Winifred Haywood, said the town council is pleased that the government is undertaking initiatives which will improve the lives of residents in that area. The building is solar-powered and has been designed to ensure ease of access for persons with disabilities. With that, we've come to the end of tonight's newscast. If you have a news story or tip, you can contact us on 698-2500-666-4337 or 618-6533. You can also visit our website, www.rdproductiongy.com. Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at Royston Drake's Production for more details on these and other stories. Join us again on Monday for another edition of News in Depth. I'm Ramesh Jairam saying good night and do have a safe weekend.